This is KGW News at 11. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Christelle Kumwe. We begin this evening with the rise in gun violence in the Rose City. The number of homicides in Portland is nearing a new record after another violent week. In 2021, there were 90 total homicides. With six weeks left in the year 2022, we're at 88 homicides. Last night, two people died in two separate shootings, one in southeast Portland, the other in northeast. Both are being investigated as homicides and police are still looking for suspects. Blur Best reports. All was calm Thursday morning in the Creston Kenilworth neighborhood in southeast. It's a peaceful neighborhood. Everyone's really friendly. But Wednesday night, it was anything but. And we heard gunshots, rapid fire gunshots, at least three, and followed by screaming and sirens and it was just a whole scene. This person didn't want to be identified on camera. They live two doors down from where police responded to a shooting on Southeast 37th Avenue around 8 o'clock Wednesday night. My goodness, there must have been at least 10 or 10, more than 10 cars. There was a big truck, um, detectives everywhere and the whole street was cordoned off. I couldn't get to my car. During the chaos, they were interviewing a potential roommate. So we were trying to hope that they would see it's a calm neighborhood. Uh, I don't know if it came across um, after last night, but um, most of the time it's peaceful here. Portland police reported one person had been shot and later died at the scene. That shooting was investigated as a homicide. That makes sense. Um, it definitely sounded like it was some kind of intentional act, people speeding off, and um, that's, that's really disturbing. I'm nervous around people because, you know, where are the rules with this wild, wild west? Diane Mendez was walking home from the grocery store at the time of the shooting. It's very unsettling for our community. For lives. About an hour later, police responded to another shooting, this time in the Park Rose neighborhood on Northeast Glen Whiting Drive. Yeah, yeah, a lot of cops, you yeah. The shooting wasn't a surprise to this man who lives in a tent behind this 7-Eleven. Because there's shootings everywhere, especially around here. There's always gunshots. Police say one person was shot and later died. It was also investigated as a homicide. This man says he knows who pulled the trigger. Not the greatest person, he, you know, he, he's, he shot at people before. If both of these deadly shootings that happened Wednesday night are found to be homicides, that will put the total number of homicides in Portland at 88. That's just shy of last year's record of 90. It's crazy, it's not Portland, you know. It's not what it's supposed to be or how it's ever been. And the timing of these tragedies is not lost on anyone. Except for the holidays, I feel bad for his family. Yeah, I'm really grateful for my roommates and my neighbors. Everyone's kind of looking out for each other and thinking about each other today. And anyone with information on either of these two shootings is asked to contact Portland Police. Blair Best, KGW News. All right, let's get to some national headlines this evening. Authorities have confirmed the suspect in the deadly shooting at a Walmart in Chesapeake, Virginia, was a night manager at the store. Police say the shooter pulled out a handgun before a routine employee meeting in a break room, then opened fire, not appearing to target anyone specifically. Investigators say the gunman killed six people, wounded half a dozen others before taking his own life. He was a Walmart employee for 12 years. Police are investigating for a possible motive. In Bloomington, Minnesota, a gunman is on the run after fatally shooting two people inside a restaurant. Witnesses say an older man wearing a mask and carrying a handgun entered the restaurant Wednesday afternoon. Customers tried to fight him before he opened fire. Police say he sped off in a car before after the shooting. It's been nearly two weeks after a quadruple homicide rocked the University of Idaho campus. Police still have no suspect, no motive, and say the case is complex. They have conducted 150 interviews, processed more than 100 pieces of evidence, and thousands of tips. More than 100 personnel from local, state, and federal agencies are helping in the investigation. 
Gresham police are looking for a male suspect who caused a rollover crash today. It happened at the intersection of Southeast 3rd Street and Burnside. Police say the suspect was driving a stolen car when he ran a red light and T-boned another vehicle. The victim in that car was transported to the local hospital. The suspect then jumped into another car and took off. Let's switch gears now to holiday travel, which is still in full swing. Let's take a look at how things are looking for travelers this Thanksgiving. For people flying to PDX this evening, there are no delays or flight cancellations, and that's good news. And if you're departing, all the departing flights are on time. Be sure to check Fly PDX before heading out the door to make sure everything is still on track with your flight. And we are also keeping our eyes on the roads this evening. We have a live look on a couple of freeways in the metro area. On the left, you're looking at I-84 East near Lloyd Boulevard. And as of right now, it is smooth sailing if you're headed out and about. And on the right, we have I-5 South near Wilsonville. And once again, smooth sailing if you're out and about and plan to head home or visit some friends. All right, let's turn to the holiday forecast. And Matt, we woke up to some fogs, but it was still dry. And uh, what can we expect? Yeah, it turned into a really warm Thanksgiving day in the metro area. We're not going to see a day this warm again in a long, long time. Speaking of fog, well, I look at it rolling around downtown. Wait to see the finish to this uh, time lapse. Really pretty cool. This is what it looks like downtown Portland right now. The fog is thickened up. 43 degrees, so it's a battle between the east wind and the fog. You get east of downtown, and there's really very little fog from about, oh, maybe the Lloyd Center, Hollywood District, westward, there's a lot of fog. Look at the visibility. The airport, no problem. 10-mile visibility, same in Hood River and Trout Tail, but west of the interstate of I-5, quarter-mile visibility in Hillsboro, half a mile visibility Aurora, McMinnville, Eugene, all seeing visibility under a mile here, quarter of a mile for much of the valley. So that is a travel problem tonight into tomorrow morning for the Willamette Valley. We've got a dense fog advisory up until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. And then things get interesting after that. We get rain Friday tomorrow, tomorrow night. But Sunday is the day that we really need to think about as far as travel goes. It's going to get tricky as snow returns to the Cascades. More on that later, Christelle. Sounds good. Thanks, Matt. For many people, this Thanksgiving was about creating new traditions or re revisiting some that we've had to postpone for the past couple of years. Catherine Cook shows us how some of you guys gave thanks and were just really happy to celebrate together. At Celebration Tabernacle in Kenton, guests lined up for a special meal, turkey and trimmings times a thousand. And all I know is all my food is gone. So, <laughs> so that's a beautiful thing. John Tolbert is associate pastor here. He's thankful for volunteers who shared part of their day. He loves what they tell him as they leave. Thank you for the opportunity. I can't wait till next year. This is the best thing that happened to me. Uh, I needed this. Over the last two years, guests got their meals to go. So this is special. You have a collection of a lot of different people um, from backgrounds and when they're all able to come together and share a meal, I, that's to me where the power is. At the Moda Center, a force that united people from all over the country, the Phil Knight Invitational. Go Spartan. Go Green. Shelby and Henry just moved here from Michigan. Thought it'd be a good time to come see some Michigan State basketball. Lacey Love is an Alabama transplant. When he said that Alabama was here playing, I said, we have to go. And make way for the Ducks. Let's give it go Ducks. Go Ducks. Kevin O'Donnell flew out from Chicago to be with his son, Jack. I just said, actually, when we left the hotel, this will be like probably the only Thanksgiving where it's not, you know, your typical turkey and big family. So what was that? cotton candy and the elf. That's what makes holidays so special. New traditions like zoo lights. A turkey hat. Thanksgiving edition. One of 12 drive through nights this season. People eat the turkey and load up the car and uh, come out and see the lights. A great way to kick off the holiday season. This is my first time to come to uh, the drive through zoo lights and we're just really all excited. Be with family and friends. Yeah, it's nice to get everybody together under the same roof, especially this year. After the last two years, Thanksgiving means so much more to a lot of people. The notion of waiting in line for a sale on this night a distant memory of priorities that maybe at the time made sense. Lessons learned and gratitude gained for what matters most, giving back and giving time to each other. In Southwest Portland, Katherine Cook, 
KGW News. All right, did you catch this change at the end of the Burnside Bridge? Well, the nose on the Portland, Oregon White Stack sign has turned red. Now, here's a fun fact about that sign. The iconic red nose has been lighting the way for all during the holiday season since 1959. It was an ad for the White Sugar Satin Company before the sportswear company White Stag replaced it with the iconic logo. It's just another sign of the holiday season in full bloom for Portlanders.